And now we will start with Filipeka uh, Keriainen from uh, the University of Helsinki, which is also a member of the Reed Co-op. Okay, hello, my name is Ville-Pekka Kärjänen and I'm from the University of Helsinki. I'm a PhD researcher in history and I'm really excited to be here today to talk about my journey with transcribers and tell you about my research. Let's start by looking at my, uh, to the, uh, my dissertation, what's the topic. Uh, my working title is How Modern States Emerged in the Periphery of the Swedish Empire, State Building Process in the Paris of Isalami, and the time period is the 17th century. Let's start by looking at this map. Usually only Swedish people, so not even Finnish people know that there was a time period that Sweden controlled major areas across the Baltic Sea from Livonia to Germany. How was it possible? Sweden was a sparsely populated area. There were any significant resources. So the answer lies in the state building process. Traditionally, it has been seen that the constant wars made Sweden strong. Like the sociologist Charles Tilly has said, war made the state and state made war. Usually, the state building is approached from the macro level by studying kings and how they issued like regulations and things like that. However, like other comparative researchers, I approach the state building from the below. In my doctoral thesis, I study uh, the relationship between the local community and the state. And the emphasis is on the local officials, which is often referred with this concept of personal agency. I have marked my research area on the map. There is the Paris of Isalmi. It was quite a big area and there were around 5,000 people living there during the 17th century. So very sparsely populated area. Let's take a look at my source material and how I use transcribers with it. My primary source material are the court records and the aim of transcribers is to make them 100% uh, correct transcriptions. Uh, for my secondary material I have different approaches. Uh, for these complaints of the common people to the king, I just run the model and it gives me a, a roughly good tra transcription then I can easily browse through the material. Uh, however, for the letters from the officials and the tax records, I use the keyword spotting. So you run the model and then you search with the keywords. Of course, this is somewhat unreliable method since you cannot be 100% sure if it's gonna find everything you want. But I can count on that my model can uh, recognize important words like e salami, which was my research area. In total, I have around 2,500 2, pages of text in transcribers. Most of them are double pages, so I think it's quite, quite a big data for one researcher, and I think I couldn't have done this without the help of transcribers. Uh, in this slide, I have summed up uh, my experience with transcribers. Uh, let's take a look first at the graph. Here you can see data from 16 models. Actually, I have made 62 models. And the blue line represents the quantity of the train set. And the yellow one is the character error rate of the validation set. I think my experiences are quite similar to others. Already the first results were promising. However, there are several hands in my material and also the handwriting changes during time. So there has been challenges. And after a certain point, the character error rate has stayed in around 5%. This doesn't mean that my uh, model hasn't improved. On the contrary, I have noticed that its ability to read handwriting outside of the model has improved a lot. Now, let's uh, look at what you can do after transcribers. After processing my material, I have built this database. And here you can see simplified example. 
from one court case. Uh, this court case is about premarital sex, and you might wonder what is, that has to do with uh, state building. And my answer to you is it has everything to do with state building. <laughs> because before the 17th century, there aren't any cases like this in fin Finnish court records. And it doesn't mean that there was a sudden change in the behavior of people. And it doesn't tell that there was a change in the social norms. Instead, it tells us how church and state uh, tightened the social control. Uh, for my database, uh, every court case is a one record, and for every record I take down several details. For example, the metadata and the transcription from the transcribers. Then I make a rough and short translation. Then I categorize the case and take down every person mentioned in the case. Uh, in this case, there's also some other information, like it says that the woman wasn't at the court, so he was absent. It also says that they had a child together, which is not often the case. And it tells us how gossip was a very important lead for the court. Uh, it is also said in this uh, uh, case that they tried to make the man to marry the woman, but he didn't want to do that. Now that you know how I built my uh, database, I can show you some statistics that are quite easy to pull out of, of the database. Uh, the left hand side, you can see the top 10 most active persons in my data. And this is something that I haven't noticed anyone doing with court records before. Uh, so the most active member was this sheriff in Posvenska Landsman, and he was almost 500 times at the court. And the most active members are lay members or officials, but if we go down the list, there is also regular peasants. And what is even more important, I can uh, take one individual person and search for his or her court history. And this is really important because usually researchers use only one case where they try to figure out what was the motives and things like that. But with my database, I can see the court history of one individual. On the right hand side, uh, you can see uh, these kind of statistics that were really popular in the 1990s. However, nowadays they are not that popular anymore. And many have questioned if this is uh, how reliable method. But I think it's important so we get the big picture, what happened at the court, and if there is some changes in the time period. And from here we can see that, for example, violence was quite low, and the most common crime was that people didn't show up to the court, and the second biggest was these moral offenses like the case I just showed you earlier. Let's move on to another example. Here you can see how I mapped the data. This map is about land ownership cases. It's a heat map, so the darker the red is, there is more disputes about land ownership. How I have built this map, first I have tagged every place name in the court records with transcribers. Then I have normalized the tag place. I have around 1,000 individual places. Then I have to locate them. This is was really hard work because in 300 years, the place names are slightly different now. And the easy part was to map this with this program called QGIS. So, conclusions. Why would I recommend transcribers? We are in transcribers user conference, so it's important to talk about this. So maybe it's more why, why you should not quit tra with transcribers. Uh, for me, I think the most important thing is data management, because all the things I have showed here today, you can do it without transcribers. You don't need transcribers if you want to build a database. You don't need it for the statistics or visualization. However, the court records are maybe the most used source material in the Nordic history. But nobody has tried to do some of the things I have done here. And I think it has something to do with transcribers. Uh, historical data is very complex, so it's so hard for one researcher to get hold on everything. 
but with the help of transcribers, you get more structure. And when you have more structure, you can make more complex st data structures much easier. Efficiency is also a big factor, because without transcribers, I couldn't have done so much data. Uh, in the end, I want also to highlight the importance of transcribers when it comes to learning. I started to use transcribers because I thought that by some miracle it will tell me what's in the, my source material. So my dream shattered quite quickly and I noticed that the AI is stupid and it makes stupid mistakes. But since we have to teach the AI with these 100% correct transcriptions, we come the the masters of the old handwriting. It was uh, nice to share my journey and my initial results. If you have any comments or questions, I'm happy to answer them. And we can also continue with the topic afterward. Here is also uh, my initial try on the social network analysis. Thank you. Right, thank you very much for this uh, insightful presentation. Um, are there any questions from the audience? Yeah, Monique. Normally it should. <laughs> so the question was, should, uh, am I going to give my uh, transcription to the National Archives? Uh, at some point, yes, but at the moment, uh, it's most of what I have done for my PhD, and I'm not in a, uh, I'm on funding, so that's why I'm still holding it. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Good. Yes, yes, I tagged while correcting the mistakes. I tagged, tagged every name. There are like 20,000 names tagged, like person names and maybe more than 10,000 uh, like place names also. Yes, I exported then and then I made the normalization like with Excel and with, with help of so short Python code. I'm not a great coder, so. <laughs> Any more questions? And also one thing I tagged was the every letter of the every court case, so I can split the text to cases, because there is, isn't like any indication when one case starts and one ends, so that was useful. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Otherwise, I would have one. Um, <laughs> how was your experience with uh, the scholarship that you got from the Recob? <laughs> you mean uh, like the uh, free pages to use with the? Yeah. Was it was it easy to apply for uh, the scholarship, for example? Did you yes, get uh, help from us when there were questions on your side? Ye yes, it was e easy. I have applied for, I also teach this, how to use transcribers in the University of Helsinki. I, I have a asked like maybe three times, give me free, free pages and they give me. <laughs> <laughs> so it has been easy. <laughs> okay. Good. Right, if there are no questions anymore. Uh, it's funny because it was said in the beginning that, uh, that we are part of the cooperation, but actually I don't know anyone else doing research with mm -hmm. transcribers in Helsinki. It's quite a big university and people are doing their own stuff. So, But you can say that I'm s sort of transcribers guy <laughs> in the <laughs> university. And so the question was, when I built the database, uh, did I use the tagging? Uh, no, at, at that moment, I just uh, uh, like manually did the work, so 
it's, it's, uh, it's quite hard because the names are always a little different during that time period, so you have to normalize a lot. So that's why it's not so automated pro process that you still need manual <laughs> labor. Yes, good question. And actually, I have a lot of people with same names because in Finland during that time it was common that you give your the eldest son gets the name of the father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there are like many people with different names, but luckily uh, it's quite a small area. So, and I can get track of who who is who from different uh, like things. It can be mentioned in the court case that this was the father and this was the son, so I can separate them. Not always, but most of the time. Good question. <laughs> Good. Then we've got one more question. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm recently into these maps. I like to make them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I think we'll move on. Thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs> <laughs>